In this section, we're going to cover using the 1.4x teleconverter. Now, we shot this true bug with a 100 millimeter lens at 1 to 1, which is the maximum magnification this lens can get. Our specimen's about 18 millimeters. So we're going to run a teleconverter and we're going to do it at the same mag so that we can compare the differences in magnification you get and also the differences in resolution. You'd be surprised how good this really is. So first thing we need to do is make sure our camera is off. We're going to do a basic dismount on our lens, which is going to be, we're going to remove the cameras off. We're going to remove the bellows diffuser to get it out of the way. So I'm going to collapse it and put it off to the side here. I'm going to remove my plant bug so that it's out of the way. Now I'm going to, again, making sure the camera's off, I'm going to put the front lens cover back on my 100 millimeter so that now I can freely grab this with my hand and not worry about touching the glass. I'm going to press the detent button on the camera body. This is a lens release button and turn it counterclockwise and the lens comes right off. Notice the red dot. That's the one we put on when we line the lens up. Now on the teleconverter, it mounts just like this. This flat cap will mount to the lens and the rear cap mounts to the camera. So this basically is going to be sandwiched between your lens and the camera body. Now, note this red dot and this red dot. If we remove this cover, and we put the teleconverter on the back of the Canon lens to where these two dots line up. Once we lock it in place, there. Once we lock it, these two dots line up. And these become the registration dots to the camera body. It's pretty simple. You really can't put this on wrong. So now I'm going to remove the rear body cap. And I'm going to place it up there just like I would a regular lens. I'm going to line it up, give it a twist and a lock. You hear the click. Now I can remove my lens cover and get everything out of the way. In reverse, I'm going to be taking my specimen and carefully placing it back up under the camera lens. I'm going to take my bellows diffuser, collapsed as it is, and put it into position. Now I'm going to take the two cords and pull it up over the lens. And I'm going to pull it up this way. And sort of cinch the cord here, like so. And just let it drape behind the, the camera. That's fine. So now, now that I've got this set up, I'm going to go ahead and put on Live View over on Capture One to get a general idea, even with the ambient room light, of where my, my specimen is and how I need to move my rail up or down to gain rough focus on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start Capture One over here. I have to turn my camera on because if I start Capture One without the camera on, I'm not going to be able to see Live View. But now the camera's on, Live View is active. I turn it on. Okay, and there's my, there's my specimen. It's actually pretty close. I got lucky. So, so I'll put this in. Now I've also got to make sure that my lens is set all the way to its highest mag, which it is. Sometimes when you take these lenses off, you can easily twist it a little bit and, and you don't realize it and it's not on its highest mag. Always check that you have the proper magnification. That's critical. So that's it. It's got it set up and it's almost to the edge of my field of view. Now, generally, is the way the way lenses work is the sharpest part of the lens is the center of the lens. The further you get to the outside, the more distortion you get. So if you can keep your specimen to within about 80%, 85% of your field of view, that's the sweet spot of the lens. You never really want to take it all the way to the outer edge. So that's about as far as we could ever take that, that, that plant bug as far as magnification of this lens goes. That's it for setting it up. The next thing, I'm, I'm doing my same copy stand work. I haven't moved my lights. And I'll go back into Capture One and run, run through the whole process with this one, and then we can compare it to the 100 millimeter. That's it. Okay, here we are back in Capture One with the uh, 100 millimeter with the 1.4 teleconverter on there. Let's uh, start up the Passport software. 
and load that in. We're going to hit take picture. Now this time when we select the lens, we're going to select it with the 1.4 teleconverter. It says right here 1.4x Canon 100mm macro. We take that one. We're still going to put our f-stop at f8 and we're still going to put our mag at 1 to 1. So everything is the same except we've added the teleconverter. Now, a bit uh, before we get started, I'm going to note something about TTL and teleconverters. TTL does not work accurately when you put a teleconverter on the back of a lens. It whacks it out. Sometimes it can be very bright, sometimes it can be very dark. So we're going to find out, you know, sometimes it can be on the money, but it's rare. We're going to find out what happens with this one. But we plan on switching to manual anyway, but at least let's see if we can get any kind of a line with uh, TTL. So I'm going to close out my live view. Oh, actually, let's let's focus on a point. Let's go up here on the on the pro notum, and uh, I'm going to go up. Okay. Let's take a shot. Closed out my live view. I'm going to turn off the modeling lamps. They are off. I am in TTL mode. And my TTL is at zero, just as a baseline. Let's see what we got. Wow. Just a bit overexposed. So that's coming in at seven. That's way too hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to manual. And I'm going to set my exposure at... Let me try five and a half, see if that works. And take a shot. Okay, that's not bad actually. I think I'm gonna go down a little bit more. I'm gonna take it closer to five, maybe 5.2. There's 5.2, I'll take a shot. There. Um, yeah, I've got my spike about where I want it. <clears throat> so there's 5.5, 5.2. I'll take 5.2. Double click. Yep, I'm on it. See, that is still incredibly sharp, and that's using the teleconverter, and we're edge to edge. So we're going to follow the same protocol we did on the other one. I'll run through this very quickly. <clears throat> Again, I'll set my dwell to one second because we're still running so so short the flash is is recycling in less than one second so we don't have any issues there double check that I'm on 1.4x everything is good there I'm going to take my last one and I'm going to white balance it like we always do I'm going to delete it with my delete key on the keyboard I'm going to get rid of the others by hitting delete all which would be MX10. They're gone. I'm going to go into Live View. I'll put on a modeling lamp. I'm going to go down to my lowest point by hitting the Down button. And it looks like, again, it's going to be the tip of that antenna right in here now. I think that's sagged down a little bit since the last time. Gravity's not been happy to this antenna. So I'm going to go down. That's beyond. Right about there. And I'll say stop here. Now that's one point. I'm going to go down here and see if I go down any further. Does it make a difference? No. Okay, so as long as I have my antenna in focus, which we do, we're going to say stop here. So now it's set. Now I've got to find my top. And remember, we're going to go past the top and then come back down in the same direction that we're going to be shooting. So I'm going to go up. And now I'm going to zoom in on my top. I can watch it come down on this pin. So as I'm coming down, I come down to where my top comes into focus ish we're good and now i'm going to say start here it's 12 steps 
Okay, so before we were nine, and now or yeah, now we're twelve. So it's not too bad. It's only a three-step difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out my live view. I'm going to turn off my modeling lamps. And closing off live view is really important. If you have live view open, you will not be able to do a stack. So now we're ready to go. I've got one second uh, delay. My overlap is still at zero. 12 steps. It's going to be 13 images. We're ready to go. And I'm going to hit start. Yeah, this is just banging away. Yep. All right, very well. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab my hand. I'm going to make sure we got it down far enough. Yep. Our last image is actually beyond where we needed to go. I don't see any useful information on the last one. Well, actually we do. We got that in there in the last one. I could have gone one more. But that's okay. We're good. So now I'm going to take all of these images and I'm going to export them. So what I'm going to do is select one. I'm going to hit um, select all and then I'm going to hit underneath select select all is MX7 MX8 is export they're obviously in order for a reason and I'm going to put this in a in a subfolder and this one's going to be called bug uh, 1.4 X so I know that it's shot with a teleconverter and this is say uh, true bug 100 millimeter and I'm going to say underscore 1.4 X 1 to 1 so it's with a 1.4 teleconverter at 1 to 1 mag that's it so we're going to hit process and let this thing do its do its business while this is working we're going to reduce this file we're going to start up helicon and then we're going to go into our Capture One shortcut folder, which I've set up here. So I can go into this, Outputs, and I'm going to go into Bug 1.4x, and I'm going to select all those. I'm going to drag them over to Helicon. This is real time, folks. I'm going to hit Render. It's done. There we are. There we go, File, and we're going to go Save, and I'm going to grab one of these and I'm just going to put comp on the end of it and save it reduce this and I'm going to go into Photoshop and open it up <clears throat> this is our true bug which we're going to open up in a minute there's this one there's our comp open it up all right beauty let's apply the same f8 f9 that we did to the other one so we'll go f8 and I'm gonna go into remember I can't hit the f9 button because of the uh, program I'm running so I'm gonna go to actions I'm gonna go up here to uh, f9 where it says sharpen and I'm gonna tell it to go play go play <clears throat> So there we go. Now I go back to layers and turn my my uh, sharpness on. Wow. My color. Wow. Now I'm going to go control alt zero to 100 percent. And that's what we have. That's with the teleconverter. That's a nice little bump. Look at the detail on that. Wow. Now, if I bring in my other one, we'll just take a look at it. And you can show side to side the difference in uh, in size. Here's our, our true bug with edits. And now I'm going to go window, arrange, tile vertically so we can see them both at 100%. So we'll kick this one, control alt zero. That's at 100%. And this is at 100%. So 
The one on the left is with the teleconverter. The one on the right is without the teleconverter. You can see the difference in mag. Let's go over to some wing venation on the back. There. And there. Now you see the one on the right is a little bit higher resolution than the one on the left. But the one on the left is, is very much larger in mag. Basically, our lighting was very similar. Um, now, we could, yeah, I'm not going to change the sharpening on the one on the left. It is what it is, but that's the difference. You are going to get some resolution fall off, as I had mentioned earlier, but it's slight compared to the magnification jump you get. And this is at 100%. So there you have it. And now the scale on this will be accurate too. Let me close this one out, actually. There. Now to put a scale on this one, I would go to, uh, let me see, uh, F7. And in this one, I'd be looking at the 100 millimeter, one to one, but see the 1.4x? That's what I select. And now when I hit M7 and I bring up my scale bar, I can go five millimeters and I can bring in my font size and everything else is the same. I hit OK. And there's my scale. Yahoo. There we go. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah, this one, uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the file name in this one. That would be F5. And I'll save it as um, with edits. These will stay on your machine. You can compare these when you get it. File, save as. And we're in the bug 1.4x. And I'll take this guy here, comp with edits. Save it. No compression. We're done.